Let's shout hallelujah. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. You guys sound really good tonight. Let's, let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, Lord. Blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said, amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your name. And say, get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Amen. All right, look back and say, we're going somewhere. All right, praise God. That's right. God's given us what we need to press on, get into that greater life. Praise God. So, um, you know, last Wednesday was, uh, you know, Thanksgiving Eve. So we preached on giving thanks. And um, but tonight we're going to start a new series for Wednesdays entitled Faith for More. Faith for More. And I'll just preach part one tonight. And so let's start out by going to John, book of John. We'll go to John 10, 10, and we'll look at that and uh, really uh, dig into that tonight. And so let's go ahead and get ready to receive what God has for us. Praise God. You know, the word of God is um, a never ending. Let's see, it's, it's the revelation of the word is inexhaustible. Amen. So it will never run out. As long as you want to get it, you're going to keep getting more and more and more revelation of the word. And that's why we don't uh, just, I have read the Bible. No, we read it. We study it. We got to dig into it every day because God's going to give us greater understanding. Okay, so um, we know this scripture here. We'll read in the King James first. <clears throat> the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We're convinced of that, right? You're convinced of the fact that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, he will also disguise situations to where he'll have you thinking that something's good for you. That's not. You know, he never tells you it's bad. He never tells you that this is going to end bad. He tries to tell you this is going to work out. This is good for you. But he has a plan, a diabolical plan to destroy you at the end of it. But Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So let's dig into this. What is life more abundantly? More, uh, look at your neighbor and say more abundantly. Okay, so uh, sometimes I think we get used to just trying to make it in this life. You guys been there? Come on, you're trying to make it. You're trying to make it from month to month, trial to trial, situation to situation. Uh, you know what? I'm just... Uh, you know, going through it. And even people of faith, you know, we 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 want to press. Right. We say, I'm just, you know, pressing on and, and, and that type of thing. But or we get comfortable and complacent. Amen. So you either trying to make it pressing or you get comfortable and complacent. And so uh, comfortable and complacent doesn't always mean that you're in God's best. It just means that you've settled in to where you are. Now, you are to be thankful. We're all to be thankful, but we have to understand the way faith works. Faith is always pushing you to something greater. And so God doesn't have it set up to where you make it to easy street, to where you just coast in. You're still supposed to believe God for greater things. You're supposed to believe God for a greater future, greater things ahead. But also, God doesn't want you to um, live this life without experiencing that next level. Amen. That next level. And so um, you got to ask yourself sometimes, OK, Lord, well, what is life more abundantly? Because that's what you came to give me. Now, more abundantly is going to be beyond where you are. Now, let's look at this in the uh, John 10, 10 in the NLT. I'm going to give you a good understanding on this because, you know, I believe that God has great things in store for us. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and to destroy. 
My purpose this is what Jesus says. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. OK, so now we're talking about more abundantly. Now we're talking about a rich and satisfying life. Just think about that for a second. What does that mean to you? A rich and satisfying life. It's not a life that you've settled. It's a rich and satisfying. It's it's abundance. It's something that God has for you that you can't get on your own. You can't reach this on your own, but this is something that he has for you, a rich and satisfying life. Now let's look at this same verse of scripture in the Amplified, the Amplified Classic. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. How many of y'all know you're supposed to be enjoying life? What does that mean, though? Think about it. We're not supposed to be getting up going through the motions. We're not supposed to be getting up making it through another day. He has come that we would enjoy life. I'm talking about every day we're supposed to be enjoying this thing. Right. Amen? Amen? We're supposed to be enjoying life and then what? Have it in abundance. You're supposed to have, oh, anybody in here with me. You're supposed to have energy in abundance. Right. You're supposed to have health in abundance. You're supposed to have finances in abundance. Come on. You're supposed to have peace in abundance. You're supposed to have all these things in abundance. You're not supposed to learn how to cope and deal with not having it. You're not supposed to uh, learn how to grin and bear it. Amen. Y'all know. Well, just, you know, yeah, you're struggling, but you can't tell nobody. Well, you ain't supposed to be struggling. Uh, that ain't spiritual. Amen. Come on. You're going through it. You got all hell coming, breaking loose on you. But you know what? You don't can't tell nobody because, you know, ain't nothing spiritual about that. You just learn how to deal with that. God don't want you learning how to deal with it. He wants you breaking free. He wants you breaking into another level, another uh, dimension of life. Amen. The life that he has come to give us. He has come to give us this life so that we would enjoy it, enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full. To the full. Y'all with me? And to the full, I'm talking about, imagine that your life is to the full. You got to, you got, I mean, see, a lot of times people think that, you know, if I give something to somebody else, then I'm going to have to do without. But that's because you're not living life to the full. See, when you're living life to the full, you don't take away from what you got to bless somebody else. Amen. Because God is trying to introduce you to overflow. And so, listen, it's not going to take away from your finances if God has you blessing somebody else. If you catch a revelation of what we're going to be preaching here. And if you are striving to receive this life and don't settle in, don't settle in to easy street comfort zones or whatever for yourself because God wants you to be a blessing to the families of the earth, but he wants you to receive the blessing and have revelation of the blessing first. You can't really go around helping everybody if you're not helped. Amen. Imagine that a counselor that's helping people is depressed. Wait, hold on. But you're helping everybody, but you're depressed. And so what happens? People put on a mask. They know how to turn it on. Okay, I got to turn on this face. Because I'm in front of the people, I'm in front of the camera, I got to turn on this face, but I'm not experiencing this myself. See, this is what Christianity is about. You're supposed to be experiencing what you believe and then you share what you're experiencing. You're not it's not supposed to be a fantasy world or it's not supposed to be us settling in and saying, well, you know what? Um, well, we're going to get to heaven. So, let, you know, let's just focus on that. No. He came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly here. Because where did he come? He came to the earth. Jesus came to the earth and conquered sin and death for us so that we can live an abundant life here in the earth. But we've got to have our expectations set in this way. He says he wants to give us this life. And we want to have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Huh. So what is that? Till it overflows. See, if it's overflowing, then now people are going to benefit just from being around you. 
Come on, somebody. When it's overflowing, I mean, when you got joy and abundance and it's overflowing, you can impact a room without saying nothing. You can impact the whole atmosphere without saying nothing. And God is not uh, telling us that we're supposed to be, you know, I'm, I'm really going to be preaching this and, and having us meditate this because you've got to expect abundant life. You, you got to stop settling. You got to stop settling for life is okay. Well, God's taking us past okay. He didn't come to give us an okay life. He didn't come to give us an okay life. He wants to position us to be able to do great things in the earth, to make a tremendous difference in this earth, a rich, satisfying life, life till it overflows. There is another level of living that God has in store for us. Now, let's go to Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we'll look at verse 8 in the Amplified. I'm going to just break some of this down. We know Hebrews 11 is a faith chapter, but I want you to see some key parts here so that it would help us. So you could be helped to go where God is taking you. Verse 8. This is speaking of Abram. Abraham. He says, urged on by faith, Abraham. So, we see right here in just the first part of verse eight that um, faith was his motivator. Amen. Faith was his motivator. And so when you have faith, your faith should be pushing you to something. It's got to be pushing you to something. Faith is was his motivator. So he says here, uh, urged on by faith when he was called, obeyed. And went forth to a place which he had destined, which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. Okay, so let's stop right there. He was, now faith is a substance. What is that? Y'all know that? Okay, so faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11. 1. And so it's not something, like if you see it right there in front of you, in your natural eyes, with your natural eyes, you don't have to have faith to go get it. Just walk over there and get it. You know, it's right there. I mean, you don't have to have faith for food when you open the refrigerator and it's already full. You just pick what you want. It takes faith when you don't have no food in there, but you want some food. Amen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Now, God has this greater level of living for us. He has this abundant life, but we're going to have to access it through faith. And we have to learn what this is really about. We have to get an understanding from heaven so that we can receive everything that God has for us, because this will change everything. This will change your behavior. This will change your actions. Sometimes people speak the wrong words because they get tired and frustrated while well, their faith is been put in a funnel. And now they're moving by their senses and all this other stuff. And you're never going to get to life more abundantly. If you stay in the sense realm, y'all with me. You're never going to get to life more abundantly if you keep looking at all those things that you want to change. Now, I'm going to show you Abraham. He was urged on. So his faith was pushing him. His faith was saying, come on. See, that happened to us today. Our faith, if we get it, if we get it, if we get enough word in us, our faith will be pushing us to go ahead when we don't feel like it. Come on, somebody. Your faith will be pushing you to go ahead and confess that anyway. Come on. There's sometimes you don't feel like doing your confessions and stuff like that. Well, guess what? Your faith is going to say it anyway. Go ahead and speak it. Come on. Speak it. Say something. Speak it out your mouth. But if not, your circumstances put that faith in the funnel. And guess what? You're not speaking what you want no more. You're speaking what you got. You're speaking what you see. You're speaking what's right now. That's not faith. And then that's not getting you to life more abundantly. That's going to keep you outside of the promise. And so what happens is a lot of Christians get used to living life outside of the promise. Why are we living outside of the promise when Jesus paid a dear price for us to have the promise? Why are we learning to live without? Why are we learning to live with less than? Why are we learning to settle in the poverty and stuff like that when God's called us to abundance? And we think that's holy. Holy is getting what God died for you to have. That's holy. Holy is living a life that's pleasing unto God. It's not holy for you to settle in and not have God's best. Y'all with me? 
That's why I got to preach this kind of stuff. I got to preach this even on a Wednesday night because we got somewhere we're going. We got somewhere we're going, man. And it's, it's like we got to get there. We're going to get there by faith. How many of y'all want to live a life that you've never lived up to this point? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you ready to get out there where you're like, wow, I really like it out here now. I'm ready to get into this thing. I'm ready to get this is life more abundantly. This is what Jesus was talking about. See what I'm saying? Jesus was talking about that we're going to live a different way. That because of what we're connected to, the stuff that's hitting the world is not going to hit us. Oh, come on, man. I'm trying to share this stuff with you because if your expectations change, you can live above influenza. Huh? Like I, 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 I'm on a rim above that. It don't work against me. See what I'm saying? God doesn't want us to be subject to everything that everybody else is subject to. If we are subject to everything the world is subject to, what's the difference? The only difference is we get to go to heaven. Well, I believe that's a old, tired, religious doctrine that's pushed out there because People don't want to be urged on by faith. Because faith will cause you to look beyond what you see. Faith will cause you to put yourself in check and tell yourself to stop whining and moaning. That's what faith will do. Faith will tell you to get in the word, take your eye off of what you see and get in the word and get a promise and then walk towards it. <laughs> Y'all with me? It's faith that have me preaching like this on Wednesday night. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious, man. I'm thinking, what is life more abundantly? You know? I say, wow, what is that, Lord? I've been saved for some time now. So let me, can I get, I won't get into that. <laughs> I think that sounds pretty good. And so, Abram was urged on by faith when he was called he obeyed. Look at your neighbors you're going to, and tell them you're going to have to obey God. Man, see people, some, you know, you just got to obey God. Just do what God says, even if it doesn't make sense. He obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. He was, de he was destined to receive as an inheritance. Somebody say inheritance. inheritance. So what is that? See, inheritance. So now I'm going to give you some some key nuggets, man. Um, when we start talking about this inheritance, this he, he, God's got stuff for us that he wants us to have and he wants us to live and be experiencing. But we are working for what we should be receiving by inheritance. We are working for what we should be receiving by inheritance. And I want to help you with this because. Even in this, you can become even self-reliant in the word. All this kind of stuff. People got so many things they can do. They, they become doers and they can do so many things. But there's an inheritance. There's another level of living that God has for you that you can't work for. There's stuff that he will open up to you that you can only receive by inheritance. Amen. And so if we're working for stuff that we should be receiving by inheritance. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have to work. You, you can work, but you got you to gotta understand your job is never going to get you the money God's trying to get you. The, the money that God's trying to get to you, you're not going to get that from your job. Amen? But, but sometimes people can't think past that. They can't think past, I want some more money. I, I've been telling you guys for years, you ought to meditate on... Um, your tithe going up. Y'all remember me saying, how many of y'all want your income to triple next year? Stuff like that. I say stuff like that and it goes uh, out and it's recorded. But how many of y'all play it back and hear it again and start meditating? And like, hold on, Lord. He just said something about tripling my income. Wait, that sounds good. We just get in church and say stuff and it's like, okay, whatever. Man, you got to take this and meditate this. 
You got to meditate this stuff. If I'm talking about what does life more abundantly mean, you need to go from this message and you need to be meditating that. You need to be asking God, well, what you talking about right there? Because I'm trying to get into that. See what I'm saying? But see, we've got to have these practical application, these practical application things that we do. And, and we say, OK, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey God with my actions. But I'm going to understand that he's causing me to grow. And sometimes it requires more of me. Because I got to get out of what I can understand and the limits, the limitations that this world is putting on me. So now when I start talking about inheritance, that's sometimes hard for people to understand. Now, they would understand it if they were receiving an inheritance, they would get it. But when you start trying to understand it from a biblical standpoint, it's like, wait a minute. Hold on, because the way we are wired, the way we are wired, that's why I'm preaching this series on Sunday. Um, you know, getting us ready for the God moves because you, you got just like the testimony we had tonight. There's so much more to stuff that's going to happen that you can't control. You can't make this stuff happen. You can't work hard enough to get it. But you've got to get your faith in line to where you start understanding. I'm taking this thing up to a higher level and I'm meditating now on what is this life more abundantly? What is that all about? I want to get that. Okay, Lord, I know I can't work my way to it. So I said just a moment ago, we're working for stuff that we should be receiving by inheritance. We should be receiving it by inheritance. Now, I want you to understand this. Self-reliance is a form of idolatry. I'm giving you all some nuggets, man. I'm going to keep teaching this truth. There are going to be some people, I'm going to tell you, there are going to be some people that grab a hold of this truth that I've been teaching. I've been teaching this truth for a long time. I haven't changed it. I haven't changed the truth I've been teaching all these years, but there are going to be some people that grab it. They're going to say, woo, I got it. They're going to start doing what's necessary on the back end. How many know you got a back office to this thing? You got a back office to this thing. You can't just be here getting it when it comes out on Wednesdays and Sundays. It, you got to have a back office. And you got to be, okay, hold on. Whew. Let me see. What, what, now let me, let me run that back. Y'all with me? You got to meditate. You got to ponder. You got to take it. If it's a word from heaven, you got to take it and let it soak in because you got different layers. It's only going to get through one layer tonight. Some of y'all ain't even going to get through that. So you got to come back at this thing because you want to do the next layer. You want to get it all the way down to the core of your being. Amen. Because to where this becomes a way of life for you. Now, remember, God's always going to give you nuggets. I'm talking about some you ought to meditate on. Meditate on it for this week. What is life more abundantly? What is that? Meditate that. Meditate it. Ask God. Ask God to give you, give you a picture of what it looks like. Now I'm starting to talk about some stuff. Uh, I just said we... We working for stuff we should be receiving by inheritance. Okay, well, what's my inheritance then, Lord? What's going on? Amen. And so self-reliance is a form of idolatry and can cause us to miss the God moves that God has in store for us. Because if you're relying on self, you only go as far as you can. And you're going to get in the way every time. God will say, be still. You, you moving because you're relying on self. And so that's just a form of idolatry. And it definitely will block your inheritance. And it won't even really help you in the end. Go to Isaiah 57, 13. Isaiah 57, 13 in the NLT. So it says here, this is for people, you know, don't, don't even become your own idol. Don't become too reliant on yourself. But even people, they put up things and they think that these things are going to protect them and help them and all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, God wants us to have finances, but he don't want you to have all your comfort and security in your finances. No, your comfort is in him. The finances is just a tool. But I ain't worth, don't, don't be thinking that you can rest at night easy because you got a bunch of money in the bank. No, your confidence is in God. But don't let that limit you. God wants you to have an abundance, but he wants us to have it the right way. To where he is still Lord. 
and we will do great things to expand the kingdom. Amen. So he says, let's see if your idols can save you when you cry to them for help. So that's why we don't have idols and that's why we don't allow ourselves. If you become so self-reliant, then that's a form of idolatry. And so you won't be able to help yourself. And so he says, let's see if your idols can save you when you cry to them for help. Why? A puff of wind can knock them down. If you just breathe on them, they'll fall over. But now this is where we want to be. See, that's what the world wants you to do. They want you to put your trust in your job. They want you to put your trust in all these other things and keep you from trusting God. Amen. They want you to put trust in the political system, all this kind of stuff. You know, people trust the political system if they're following a political system that's leading them away from God. I mean, obviously, you trust the political system if you're letting the political system lead you away from God. Amen. It's like, no, no, no. I'm only going to do what God says and I'm only in agreement with what God wants. Because that's where my trust is, because nothing, none of this stuff can help you. He says, but whosoever trusts in me. Now what? We're starting to talk about inheritance, Right. But whosoever trusts in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. And so now we're talking about if we trust God, if we just trust God, I said this Sunday, but, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. If we just do that as a people, because you got to trust God in order to obey him. Amen. Amen. If you don't trust him, you're not going to obey him. You're not going to obey him. But if you trust him, you'll obey him 100 percent. There won't be one area of your life that you don't obey God in if you trust him. Amen. If you trust him, you'll obey him in all areas. You'll say what he tells you to say. You'll stop doing what he don't want you to do. You'll do what he wants you to do. You won't. You'll never uh, have a question with tithing and all that stuff. It, it's easy. It's a trust issue. But if you trust him now, anything you put before God, let me just dig deeper into this. Anything you put before God has become an idol. Y'all with me? So anything that you put before God. So let's look at it this way. Anything that is uh, hindering your obedience to God. That's an idol. And you put trust in that more than you put in God. Y'all with me? See what I'm saying? See how these things can work? People's money can be an idol. Why? Because they don't want to honor God with the money. So they put their trust in the money. And so their trust in the money just took them from focusing on God. And so now they have demoted God and promoted their money. Amen. But he's saying... That ain't going to help you. It could be blown over. But if you trust me, whosoever trusts me. See, if I trust God, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to do what God says all the time. All the time. Sometimes uh, I may be referred to as um, somewhat of a hard pastor or something like that. You know, I've, I've gotten that a lot. OK, you know. Yeah, you know, you come over there, man, but, uh, you know, pastor don't play. <laughs> you know what? But we really don't, you know, have to have a precursor. It is what it is. I just trust God. I mean, everybody, if you don't trust God, I mean, you're wasting time anyway. You're wasting time with this Christianity thing anyway. Because you ain't going to get what he has for you. See what I'm saying? And so. He says, but whosoever trusts in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. So we're talking about if we trust God, we inherit and we possess. How many of y'all want to possess the land? How many of y'all want to start taking ownership of stuff? Amen. And so now let's go to Galatians, Galatians 3.29, Galatians 3.29 NLT. So. This is how we qualify for inheritance. Now, in um, 
our understanding and the, you know, the way the world works, you only qualify for inheritance. It's, most times it's going to be by a birthright or something, right? right? You know, you've got to be birthright. You've got to be married in there. You've got to somehow qualify for an actual inheritance. Well, this is the way we qualify. This is how we qualify for this inheritance that I'm going to be talking about. What this, this uh, life more abundantly. That's really what Jesus was coming to do is, is reconnect man to the blessing. Because man was put in the earth to thrive and live above, but man fell to sin. And so now, guess what? The curse started to take off. You realize that we all supposed to be living long and strong. Nobody's supposed to be dying off early. Getting If you die, you're supposed to just, you know, what happened? I just got, it just went home. Well, what, what was wrong with him? Nothing. What'd you die of? Nothing. Y'all with me? You ought to have that kind of attitude. You know, we, but down here, because we lack re revelation, we, man, we're, a lot of people are succumbing to all kind of stuff. And they say, well, what happened to him? Well, they had a heart attack. They had this, they had that. Well, if you get a revelation of life more abundantly, now, I'm not saying if you have some people that experienced that, Hey, praise God, preferably they were saved and they're, they're in heaven, which is good. But I'm not in heaven yet. So I'm still on assignment. And so my job is to preach the truth. My job is to help you. Maybe you were one that was on that uh, religious tone. But God's got Pastor Troy down here. Come on to wake some folks up. To help some folks say, wait, hold on. We supposed to have something. I ain't supposed to have none of these diseases. Right. I'm catching a revelation of, well, what'd you say, Jesus? You said life more abundantly. What is that? See what I'm saying? That's what we should be expecting. But okay, let me learn. Help me. See, and this is what you ought to want. You ought to want to get this kind of type of teaching so that now you can say, okay, Jesus paid. Like, it'd be different if he was coming to pay it. He already did. Y'all know that? He, he ain't coming to pay it. He already paid it. I'm talking about he didn't pay like a small price. He paid a dear price. I mean, like, man, like took on the suffering and you know what I'm saying? Just took on some, man, some punishment. So at least we ought to receive what he paid for us to get. Amen. That's like you do something nice for someone, pay for them to go to this nice restaurant and you say, you know, I, it's all paid in full and they don't go. They no show it. You went up in there and spent hundreds and they just no show it. So now nah, we, we're going to McDonald's. Man, but I just spent all this money. For you to go up in there and eat that steak and all that stuff, it's all ready for you, man. Oh, no. Because we're not worthy of that. Wow. You don't have to be worthy. I paid for it. What you talking about worthy? Is this your name? That's the kind of stuff I'm trying to help you all understand. To where all people need to do is verify your identity. That's all they need to do. Are you so-and-so? And this is what happens in, 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 in the... The church, what God is looking to do. We are, listen, we are verified. I'm going to show you right here in this scripture, but this is our identity. And so when they want to verify, before I can get this, oh, you got to verify my identity. That's all. Oh, that's all you need. Like today, they say, we need to see your ID. We need to see your ID before we'll let you purchase this. Or we need to see your ID because we need to confirm your identity. Well, your identity in Christ is confirmed. And so now you become an heir. So now you can start thinking about inheritance. You can start thinking about possession. You can start thinking about God doing some stuff that was beyond your pay grade. Your ability to pay for it didn't matter. Amen. Come on. God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. All the silver, all the gold belongs to him. That's your daddy. That's your Abba. He's trying to tell you, I didn't pay for it. Why don't you receive it? Get in a position to receive it. Amen. So he says, and now 
that you belong to Christ. So now, is your, is your identity verified? Now that's the question, see? Only God knows if you really saved, if you plan with him or not. I don't know that. But I'll tell you one thing, my identity is verified. They can run the fingerprint check on it. They can do what? They can do whatever they want to do. Hey Amen. Put me under some light or something. That, hey, I'm legit. Verified. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. Who's that talking about? Man, I was sharing this with somebody recently. I say, because I'm, I'm, I'm I have a habit of this. They say, uh, how are you doing? I say, I'm blessed. And I don't mean, I mean it. Well, he said, well, uh, so why are you blessed? I said, oh, because I'm saved and I'm the seed. Of, I'm the seed of Abraham. <laughs> he wasn't expecting all that. So since you asked, yeah, let me let me give you a, a little bit of a uh, let me give you some biblical insight. See, that's what the blessing that I'm empowered to succeed. And that's the blessing that was placed on Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And so I'm Abraham's seed because I'm in Jesus. And so that's why I'm blessed. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, God bless you when you sneeze. I'm talking about I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. How you doing? People that are supposed to be Christians, they don't want to get out. They don't want to engage like that. They don't want to engage like that. But I got a revelation. You get a revelation, you'll have a revolution. Amen. You'll change. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all want your language changed? I mean, your thoughts changed. Glory to God. God's trying to help us understand that we're King's kids. And a lot of people are King's kids running around here with a poverty mindset. But you're a king's kid. Running around with a poverty mindset. That ought not be. That ought not be. But how many know God's bringing truth that'll bring transformation? And we're going to keep doing it. And that's what's going to cause us to change. And now that you belong to Christ. Just say it, just say it in here just so I know you. Say, I belong to Christ. Okay, so now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. Okay, hold on. Now we're getting down with this thing. Because you have received Jesus as Lord, you are grafted into the royal family of God. But then now you are promoted. Amen. You are promoted even above because there are people right now who are um, maybe of... of uh, you know, they may be connected to this uh, genetically speaking, but they've yet to receive Christ. So guess what? I pass them up. I don't care if your family been believing in all this stuff, the Torah and all that for years. Well, guess what? You didn't receive the Messiah, but I did. Amen. So guess what happens to me? Promotion. I'm advancing. Amen. I'm going into. Come on, somebody. I'm I'm going into. Life more abundantly. Amen. Then people that are. Now we're spiritually connected. But there are people that are genetically connected. To the to Abraham. But they don't receive the Messiah. So guess what? You don't get the promotion. Amen. 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 But I'm in Christ. So are you. So now you are the true. That's what the word true means. Y'all get it? Now we're going past genetically connected. We're talking about spiritual inheritance. You are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to who? Belongs to you? Because you're in Christ. So now Abraham's promise belongs to you. Man, I'm, I'm so this, this right here is powerful stuff. Hey Amen. Let me just, let's go over here real quick. I didn't put it in there, but we're going to come back to our next scripture. But go back to uh, Genesis 12. Because you got to really get revelation to this promise. Because I, I think this will really change your expectations. How many of y'all expect everything to work out well for you? 
Everything? No, you can't have everything working for you. That's what the world says. But, you, you know, I'm going I'm to show you. See, we've got to take on a different mindset. Now, Abraham had to obey, but Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. So he had to step. He had to walk by obedience, but he had to start walking by faith. And I will make you make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And now shall be a blessing. So we're here to be a blessing to the families of the earth. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth. What? Be blessed. So, man, if you were reading the Bible, wouldn't you want to get in on that? Well, your way in is through Jesus. Your way in is through Jesus. And this blessing right here is not just something that we use uh, loosely. This is very powerful. Look at this verse two in the Amplified. He says, verse two and three in the Amplified. He says, and I will Make of you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant. Y'all, anybody in here with me? Are we all, are we in this thing for this? Yes. Or are we just trying to, you know, trying to make it to heaven? I ain't going to be able to, I ain't going to be able to witness to nobody, pastor. I ain't got my joy, so I'm trying to stay away from everybody. You got to take this thing out there, man. You got to let this light shine. I mean, he tells us that you can't have your light being under a bushel. But you got to see if I get this, then I'll mix me right here. I'm excited. I'm, I'm not trying to say, oh, I got to I got to suffer for Jesus. I ain't got to suffer for him. He never told me to suffer for him. But I am going to receive what he has. And so now he says, and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. How many of y'all want to have an abundant increase of favors? I'm talking about God to give you favor in the sight of God and man. How many of y'all want that? You know, Proverbs 3, 4, you'll get favor in the sight of God and man. Or oh, wait, yeah, somewhere in there. That's powerful stuff, man. I'm, I get excited about it. And then verse three says, and I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you. So people are going to definitely want to bless you because <laughs> they getting the blessing just from blessing you. Amen. Come on, somebody. The company gets the same business because they're taking care of you. I mean, your boss is getting blessed because he promoting you. See? And then he says here, and I will curse him who curses you or uses insolent language towards you. Don't, if they want to talk bad about you. I mean, if you're nice, you could warn them, but you don't even have to be nice. You know, you might sometimes you might say, you know. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Now, they would probably, you know, especially me. I mean, I get you. You guys be surprised how much stuff I get. But they would probably accuse me. If I said that, they'd probably say, no, Pastor threatened me that he was going to beat me up. I ain't got to touch you. <laughs> I ain't got to touch nobody. But if you want to go that route. Then now you're going to have to deal with my daddy. You're going to have to deal with my daddy. Amen. Amen. And so I ain't going to be able to stop him. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But just think about that. So why do I have to be worried about what somebody says about me or what they do or whatever? I don't care. Because I'm under the blessing. And he says that anybody who curses you or uses insolent language towards you, then I'm going to deal with them. I'm going to curse them. He says, in you will all, now speaking of Abraham, in you will all the families and kindreds of the earth be blessed and by you, they will what? So when you receive Jesus, you just blessed yourself. See that? Boy, I wish they taught this like early on. That's why I got to teach it over here. But I, I wish like when when I first got saved, they started talking about, now you know you're the seed of Abraham. Huh? 
What does that mean? Amen. I wish I got that right. Out. Like, come up here. You want anybody want to receive Jesus? OK, yeah, we're going to receive Jesus. OK, praise God. Now, let's get them back there and teach them that they're the seed of Abraham. That's going to change everything. See, we get around to learning this stuff later. But I think in these last days, we got to start teaching it right out the gate, right out the gate. And that's why I'm, I'm encouraging you guys to press in so you can get trained up because we got work to do. See what I'm saying? You can't be limping along. We, we got to have some other. You got to be training some other people. You got people to school, man. But you got to get this. You can't school nobody if you ain't got it. If you still talking about we broke, we this, we that. You ain't listening to nothing I've been preaching. So I can't trust you to, you know, school somebody else. See what I'm saying? But if you get it. You say, oh, yeah, I'm ready to train some folks. Get it on a fast track. See, I've been speaking this. I've been speaking stuff prophetically. I've been speaking stuff by faith and some of that stuff. Maybe y'all don't remember, but I'm, I'm talking about my vision is big. I'm talking about having Bible studies all over the city. Huh? Because they got people want to train somebody. So, you know, I got to help these people because this all this I got is too good for me to keep to myself. But if you're not living life more abundantly, you ain't never going to have time in your schedule. You need to run no Bible study, please. You ain't, ain't going to have time to do that. See what I'm saying? But if you live in life more abundantly, you gonna have time. You have time to do the things of God. You'll be inspired and encouraged. Glory to God, you'll be a magnet. You ain't got to look for people to talk to. They'll be coming to you. Right. How many of y'all want that? Right. See, and this is what this blessing is all about. This blessing that God has given us access to, this causes us to have this magnetic attraction. See, if I'm not struggling, I'm, man, I'm, you know, you know, people that's going through stuff, it's kind of hard to be around them sometimes. Because they don't know, you know, they wearing that thing. They wearing that. But man, when you, you know, you got the joy, the joy is moving. You just like, bam, yeah, let's go. Man, you see now you're full. So it's not going to hurt you to give. Y'all with me? It ain't going to hurt you to give. It ain't going to hurt you to give joy. It ain't going to hurt you to share the word. It ain't going to hurt you because you're full. How many of y'all want life more abundantly though? Are we looking to get there to where God can do it? Now we've inherited this. And um, so this blessing is empowering us. This is tremendous power here. So we're going um, now. Praise God. Oh, what's this one? Oh, yeah. You'll find favor there. That's a Proverbs 3, 4. You'll find favor and a good understanding and esteem in the sight of God and man. So this is good. This is worth having. Amen. This is worth having. And so we have blessed ourselves because we chose Jesus. Go back to Galatians 3.29. Praise God. I'm going to close this up. But I want you to be excited because we're going to take on a different attitude. Amen. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. And so I'm excited about life more abundantly. And I'm excited about my inheritance. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for... Uh, this inheritance. I want to understand inheritance and possession. I'm going to be able to get some stuff that God has for me. But in order for this to work for me, and this is for all of us, we we need to take on uh, the attitude of Abraham. Now you're his seed, so you need to take on that attitude. Now go to Romans. We'll close over here. Romans 4, 19 through 21. King James. This is imperative that you take on this attitude. And verse 19, and being not weak in faith. See that? Being not weak in faith. Boy, I'm telling you, man, when you think about it, God had some uh, great things he was going to do through Abraham, but he had to have faith to go ahead and press towards those things. And then as we had looked earlier in, in uh, Hebrews 11, 8, he went towards uh, a land 
that he would afterwards receive as an inheritance, but he went towards it by faith because he trusted God and that caused him to move. That caused him to move um, in that direction. Now, really quick, uh, Hebrews 11.10 in the Amplified, this, this real fast, and then we'll come back to this and close, but you got to get this because this was the, the expectation that he had was great. So Abram was told to go out, but look at the expectation he had in verse 10, Hebrews 11, 10, for he was waiting expectantly and confidently looking forward to the city, which uh, has fixed and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And so basically he was so motivated because he was looking for what God had. Y'all with me? He was not moved by his own situation. And we'll get into this in this um, uh, Romans 4, 19. See, when you got your eyes set on something else, you got your eyes set on what God has for you. As you're moving towards it, you don't, you don't get stumbled by what you see. You don't get stumbled because God could tell you, I got something great for you. But if you're not careful, you say, yeah, but I don't have the money for it. I don't have the education. I don't have the health. I don't have all this stuff. And you will find yourself backing out of the promise instead of going towards it. But you got to take on the attitude that Abraham had. And Abraham, Abraham being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Why was this important? Because God told him that he's going to have a baby, but he's 100 years old. And so he could not consider, y'all with me? But God could tell you something. He could tell you, I'm going to make you one of the largest landowners in California. See, some of y'all, that went right over your head. But then you might consider what you got right now. <laughs> We're talking about a God move, man. He don't want you to consider what you got. If you're going to consider anything you got, then you need to be considering the blessing. You need to be considering the fact that I am the seed of Abraham and the blessing of God is on my life. That's what you ought to consider. Because Abraham, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he was old, his wife was old. But how many know God was still in charge? He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. This is dangerous. We get those yeah buts and we consider where we are. God says stop meditating on that. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now look at this. And being fully persuaded. How many of y'all want to be fully persuaded? Come on, if God said it, how many know he can do it? God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he will repent. And so we've got to be a people to say, I'm going to believe that. I'm going to get God's best. I'm not going to be shortchanged. I'm going forward with this thing. And I'm not considering my current situation. I'm not going to consider my bank account right now because I'm not moving on this by my bank account. I'm, I'm moving on heaven's economy. Amen. Come on. And faith is the key that gives me access to heaven's economy. And we have got to stop being limited by our natural circumstances and start moving. He says, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, who promised it? God. Now we started out this message saying Jesus came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So we need to go away saying, what is that Lord? Cause you pay such a dear price for it. I need to know what it is. And I need to position myself to receive it. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able. How many know God is able? Do you know he's able? Come on, somebody. Do you know he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think? Come on. How many of y'all know that God is able to move in your situation late in the midnight hour? Come on. Late in the midnight hour, God could swoop in there and it's changed. When you least expect it, God has fixed it because he's able. Now, this has got to be the attitude that we take. You say, oh, no. Okay, pastor, I hear you now. I'm not settling. Woo, glory to God. I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to consider my current situation, my current circumstance. I'm on my way to greater. Come on. How many of y'all on your way to greater? I'm talking about, you know what? 
uh, even in that, that story, we don't have time to go back there, but in, in um, Hebrews 11, 8 through 10, they start talking about a thing around verse 9 that Abram, Abraham was sojourning. So as he was on his way, he wasn't getting comfortable up in them places. Standing in them tents and all that kind. He wasn't getting comfortable because he knew he was on his way. Just because you might be on a journey, don't get comfortable. Because God's got you somewhere. He's got you going somewhere that's much greater. And so you need to keep your eyes ahead and not where you are. Don't get down on yourself based on your current status. Don't sit down and look, oh man, this is it. No, no, you got much greater ahead. Ask God to give you a revelation of life more abundantly. Ask God to give you a revelation of inheritance and possession. Ask God to show you how to possess your inheritance. Y'all ready for this to kick off? Huh? Anybody up in here ready to have status changes? Come on, I'm talking about God to do a status change and mess around and you watch. Somebody's going to testify in here and it might be me, but somebody's going to testify soon of a status change. I'm not talking about, oh, I got a little money. No, my status has completely changed. See what I'm saying? It's coming this way. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for giving us the word and revelation of the word and giving us the spirit to grab a hold of the truth. I pray for everyone here, everyone at home. I pray that you encourage us all. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we would not consider our current situations, our circumstances. But we would meditate on the blessing. We would meditate on life more abundantly. We would meditate on inheritance and possession. Well, we know you've got great things in store for us. And we know that it's already been paid for. So we open our hearts right now to receive that we would be a blessing to the families of the earth. We thank you for that, Lord. We praise you and honor you for who you are. Maybe you're watching us right now, no matter where you are, what time it is. God knows that you're watching. And God loves you and cares for you. And he wants to give you access to this life more abundantly that we're speaking of. But you've got to welcome Jesus into your life. You've got to surrender. Maybe you don't understand everything right now, but just say yes to him and he'll bring in the change. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message and if you're at home, repeat it with us. And and God's going to bless you from that point. Let's let's say it and let's. Welcome people into the family of God. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please. And fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's stand to our feet. Let's get ready to walk out into this power. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you. We love you. We praise you for who you are. Lord, as we leave this place, we ask that you would continue to minister to us in a very personal way. We ask, Lord, you would also continue to surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen.